time about at the very beginning it was somewhat of a joke at the very beginning of all of this when i first signed on to x ty and i were talking a lot every single day about maxine and pearl and the, the connection between those two women and within those conversations this idea just started to form somewhat as a joke at first i guess because we never like really believed that this could happen it was just this fantasy that we had of doing a prequel to to pearl well another cool thing about the pearl character um and mia playing both roles is that you know while we were developing that and while we were figuring out pearl's backstory it just sort of bloomed into something like you know, far more three-dimensional than we anticipated. So it was very easy to reference things for her when she was in character of like what she's feeling and why. And that just opened up like a lot of ideas for the both of us. And it opened up the possibilities to like, you know, expand on, on the character a lot more. And that was really exciting and made for an opportunity to do something that like, I think neither of us had ever done before. People pay an arm and a leg to see this. Pictures like this are gonna revolutionize the industry. And I, for one, plan on capitalizing early. And he started asking me questions. And I would remember, I would, you know, like be doing my groceries and he sent me texts like, oh, what do you think a really cool idea for a story would be? Like, like can you just like send me ideas for uh, like scenes that you've envisioned or that you've always wanted to, to do or like be a part of? And for a little while, it was just a way to kind of prep and understand older Pearl's backstory more. And over time, that morphed into a script. But at the very beginning, it was just, I guess, like two just very excited people about the project that we had on our hands and the fact that we were in New Zealand and the, the, the global situation at hand with coronavirus and, and the fact that we had these amazing sets. And it just felt to us that everything was in place for a prequel to be possible. Well, I think what Pearl sees in Maxine is herself. I think she sees a time in her own life when she had a chance to go be someone else because I think Pearl also grew up not wanting to be the person living on this farm in Texas. One day you'll never see me again. That's right, Charlie. Farm life may be it for you, but it sure ain't for me. I'm special. And I think she sees Maxine at a precipice of about to maybe leave that behind. And I think she's very envious of that. And I think that that makes her obsessed because I think that really brings up all of the regret and resentfulness that she's been holding on to for all this time. Please, I'm a star! We wrote the script over maybe like a six week period. It was pretty quick. I think it's great when actors participate in the development of a story. I think a lot of actors have great perspective to add to their characters, but also just from the perspective of an actor. So that was one thing. The fact that Mia had contributed to the writing process was something that was just generally interesting about the project and something that I felt like I wanted to be involved in. By, well, by the time I got to X, I had a pretty solid um, backstory created for Pearl. And by the time we started filming Pearl, the Pearl script had already been written. So a lot of that was informing my prep for older Pearl. So I always, you know, at the back of my head, it, like just thought, well, uh, you know, if worst case scenario, if for some reason that this wasn't able to happen, at the very least, it would have been a tremendous character prep study for, for older Pearl, and, and it did help me immensely. Pearl is someone who's, like a lot of people, has a lot of regrets in life and laments a lot of things, didn't take as many chances as she could, maybe, you know, caved into rejection a few too many times and accepted things she didn't want to accept. Sorry, it's just not what we had in mind. We already have plenty of gals like you in the troupe. We're looking for something different today. You know, more all-American younger and blonde, someone with X Factor. There was just a flow to the entire unraveling of it all. It, it just felt like uh, everything was aligned and, and, and playing out in our favor. You know, when I, when I would meet people about this movie, the first question I always asked them was like, why the hell do you want to be in this movie? Um, because there's no shortage of reasons not to be in the movie. And I thought, you know what, even the fact that you would ask me that question is, is, a, is a good sign, because it's nice when a writer-director knows what they've written. So he's like, yeah, this is weird. 
and uh, brutal. You're not gonna leave me here! I'm not staying on this farm! <laughs> I mean, it's unsettling, which should be. I feel as though the projectionist is almost a figment of Pearl's imagination. Like, he could play on some level as though he doesn't exist. Just his name alone, like, the projectionist. He's Pearl's projections of what she envisions and desires and wants. I wouldn't mind seeing you up on that screen one day, Mrs. Pearl. She's projecting onto the projectionist her desires and her dreams and her beliefs about herself. We talked a lot about process. I think that's one of the things that can take a little while to adjust to is actors have different ways that they like to work and directors have different things that they expect of actors. And Mia's thing was, was that, I mean, Mia was great. She said, I'm open to anything, you know, I'm like, uh, I feel like we gotta figure it out together. And her main thrust was, you know, we can just try stuff. We don't have to talk it through. We don't have to figure everything out ahead of time. We can try stuff, which is fun. And that's something that takes trust and is hard to do when you're just meeting somebody and then you're getting on set and you're acting with them. You don't know, you know, whether you're gonna screw them up, especially coming in as a supporting character. You don't wanna, Mia's been working a long time on this role and spent putting a lot of hours in and you don't want to come in and just get in her way or screw things up. And... That's a lot to put on an actor and, and like they just rose to the challenge in such a way that was that was like so awesome to behold. This script is quite theatrical and there's, um, in fact for the audition, I had to learn a five page, it's not a monologue but it's pretty close, <laughs> and uh, which goes like this to this amazing crescendo. I shoulder a burden you will never understand. Spend my days feeding and wiping the snot off the face of the man I married. You dare sit there and talk to me about regrets. I was supposed to be his wife, not his mother. Don't you ever speak that way to me again, do you hear me? And it, it's just such an actor's piece. It's a hell of a challenge. And um, I love the complexity of it. And also a genre that I, I haven't made a horror film before, so. I won't let you flaunt your arrogance in my face. You are not better than me. You know, and I think with making a movie like this, you really have to have like a, a shorthand with everybody, and you have to kind of like get where everybody's coming from because the thing about this movie is it's a very like narrow bullseye that you have to hit to get the humor right or to get the horror right or to get the tension right and if you're with someone who doesn't have the same sensibilities as you even if it's off just a little bit a joke won't land or a scary moment won't work or like a tension between two characters won't work there were never any limitations when working with him it was always just yes like go go and explore that and you know, see what feels good and what works best and, and whatever can potentially make the work better, do that. Like, so immensely talented and like on a visual level, the way he's able to uh, put scenes together and his style, he's got such a distinct style that he approaches every single scene with. We talked a little bit about the projectionist being like Dick Van Dyke in Mary Poppins, but if you, if in addition to him being this charming, outgoing, bubbly personality, you also saw like the gross, dark underbelly of like a bright, colorful Disney film. How about something different tonight? How about... How about a film nobody else has seen? Funnily enough, um, when we were first um, talking about this and writing the script and bringing everything together, we had the idea of it actually being in black and white, but then we kind of thought like, a lot of movies now being made in black and white and that's become like its own thing and and perhaps it'd be more interesting to do something different and, and unique. You're lying. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Well, really what happened was that we were gonna do black and white and then they and then we were told you can't do black and white and <laughs> and then we were like, oh that's a bummer. And then and then we kind of had to go back to the drawing board and we were like, well, let's go the complete other way with it. Let's go Technicolor. And the thing about Elliot is that, you know, 
I have a very particular visual sense for each movie, and he instantaneously gets it. So when I'm like, you know, kind of like this, he's like, yes. And then it's just easy. So there's not this, like, debate about what we're trying to do or this push-pull of one person trying to do things. We're trying to serve the movie in the same way. And um, he just, you know, he gets it. And it just goes to show that was a really valuable lesson that, you know, a no, a supposed no, and can actually be transformed into something really quite wonderful because I, I couldn't imagine Pearl in any other way now. And the thing that was great about Elliot is that, like, we spent a lot of time, like, really researching how to get that right. And I think we did a good job, and I think it shows in the film. I think it's really, the, the lighting in the movie is expressive of an era that is not today. <laughs>